The Negro slave by Swanee River sang. Well pleased he listened to his echoes ringing, for in his heart a secret comfort sprang, when nature seemed to join his mournful singing. To memory cherished objects fondly clinging, his bosom felt the sunset's patient glow, and spirit whispers into weird life springing, allured to worlds he trusted yet to know, and lighted for a while life's burdens here below. The drowsy dawn from many a low-built shed beheld his kindred driven to their task. Late evening saw them turn with weary tread and painful faces back. And dost thou ask how sang these bondmen, how their sufferings mask? Song is the soul of sympathy divine, and hath an inner ray where hope may bask. Song turns the humblest waters into wine, illumines exile hearts, and makes their faces shine. The Negro Slave by Swanee River sang. There soon the human hunter rode along, and eagerly behind him came a gang of hounds and men. The bondman hushed his song, Around him came a silent, listening throng. Some runaway, he muttered, said no more, but sank from view the growing corn among, and though deep pangs his wounded spirit bore, he hushed his soul and went on singing as before. So fared the land where slaves were groaning, yet where beauty's eyes must feed the lusts of men. Tis as when horrid dreams we half forget, would then relate and still relate again. Ah, cold abhorrence hesitates my pen. The heavens were sad, the hearts of men were faint. Philanthropy implored and wept, but then the wrong, unblushing, trampled on restraint, while feeble law sat by and uttered no complaint. Fly and be free, a whisper comes from heaven. Thy cries are heard, the bondsman's up and gone, to grasp the dearest boon to mortals give, given. He frantic flies, he frantic flies, unaided and alone, to him the red man's dwellings are unknown. But he can crave the freedom of his race, can find his harvests in the desert sown, and in the cypress forest's dark embrace a pathway to his habitations safely trace. The sable slave from Georgia's utmost bounds escapes for life into the great Wahoo. Here he has left afar the savage hounds and human hunters that did late pursue. There in the hammock darkly hid from view, his wretched limbs are stretched a while to rest till some kind seminal shall guide him through to where by hound nor hunter more distressed, he in a flowery home shall be the red man's guest. If tilled profusion does not crown the view, nor wide ranged farms begirt with fences spread, the cultivated plot is well to do, and where no slave is groaning life has led, the songs of plenty fill the lowliest shed. Who could wish more when nature's always green, brings forth fruit-bearing woods and fields of bread. Wish more, where cheerful valleys bloom between, and herds browse on the hills that winter never has seen. Shall high-domed mosque or steepled cathedral alone to man his native land endear? Shall pride's palatial pomp and ease withal the only shrines of patriotism rear? Oh, who can limit adoration's sphere or check the inspiring currents of the soul? Who hush the whispers of the vernal year or press the sons of freedom from their goal? Who from nature wrest the mystery of control? Plebeian, savage, sage, or lord, or fiend, man hath of justice and of right a cause. Prior to all that ever has contravened, or even to man's existence, justice was. Right would be right amid the wreck of laws. Tis so, and all ordaining nature gives 
somewhere to live to every child she has. She gives, and to her bosom each receives, include inducing it to love the spot whereon it lives. Fair Florida, whose scenes could so enhance, could in the sweetness of the earth excel, was thou the Seminole's inheritance? Yea, it was thee he loved, and loved so well. Twas neath thy palms and pines he strove to dwell, not savage, but resentful to the knife. For thee he sternly struggled, sternly fell. Thoughtful and brave, in long uneven strife, he held the verge of manhood mid dark heights of life. A wild born pride endeared him to thy soil, where roamed his herds without a keeper's care, where man knew not the pangs of slavish toil, and where thou didst not blooming pleasures spare. But well allotted each an ample share, he loved to dwell. Oh, isn't the goal of life where man has plenty and to man is fair? When free from avarice's pinch and strife, is earth not like the Eden home of man and wife? If earth were freed from those who buy and sell, if soon were free from most or all its ills, from that which makes it most of all a hell, is what the stingy of a purse of fortune fills, the man who blesses and the man who kills. Oft have a kindred purpose after all, a purpose that will ring in a mammon's tills, and that has never unheeded made a call since Eve and Adam trod the thistles of their fall. What meant the actions of the good and great, the Christ and his apostles, holy men? Why wandered they about in solitude, despising what the world called greatness then? Why shun the numerous cities' palaces when eternal themes their warning tongues inspired? Why? But to reach Edenic source again in nature. Why, if not that they aspired to Tari? Till seraphic touch and flame had fired their hearts to work man's restoration. This, this is the voice of time unfolding truth. Does not nature pre-teach us primal bliss? Who has not felt her lessons in his youth? And having felt, who can forget forsooth the voice of birds, the toil and hum of bees, and air all filled with sounds, sweet or uncouth, dark heights, majestic woods and rolling seas have been my teachers, and my teachers still be these. Have I not seen the hills of Kandahar clothed in the fury of a thunderstorm, when majesty rolled in his cloud-dark car, wreathed his dread brow with lightning's livid form, and with a deluge robed his threatening arm? Not seen when night fled his terrific feet, the great deep rose to utter forth alarm. <clears throat> the hills in dreadful hurry rushed to meet, and rocking mountains started from their darkened seat. In happy childhood, I have even loved to sport the wild, and in the front and face of dreadest nature watch the storm, unmoved that tore the oak tree from its ancient place and took the hilltops in its dark embrace. And then I've loved the pleasing after view, the quiet valley spanned with light and grace, the watery field replete with life anew and sunset robing earth in love's sublimest hue. Thus, when far the wide Bahamas shone, in a lucent stillness gleamed the silent sea, when day's last rim sank like a molten zone, emblazing in omnific heraldry the far-off crag and latest mountain tree. Thus on a strand dividing worlds I've stood, 
till, touched by the dark wand of mystery, I felt the brow of night and earth imbued with the dread emotions of a great eternal good. Upon the shells by Caribbea's wave, I've heard the anthems of the mighty sea, heard there the dark pines that their voices gave, and heard a stream denote its minst 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 minstrelsy. Mm. And heard a stream denote its minstrelsy. How sweet, all lonely was it there to be. The stars were bright, the moon was up and clear. But when I thought of those who once were free and came at wanted times to worship there, the sea's deep voice grew sad and acclaimed of me a tear. Oh, sing it in the light of freedom's morn. Though tyrant wars have made the earth a grave, the good, the great, and true are, if so, born, and so with slaves. Chains do not make the slave. If high-souled birth be what the mother gave, if manly birth and manly to the core, whatever the test, the man will he behave. Crush him to earth and crush him over and over. A man he'll rise at last and meet you as before. So with our young Atlassa, hero born, free as the air within his palmy shade, the nobler traits that do the man adorn in him were native, not the music made in Tampa's forests or the Everglade was fitter than in this young seminal was the proud spirit which did life pervade and glow and tremble in his ardent soul, which lit his inmost self and spurned all mean control. Then him none followed chase with nimbler feet, none readier in the forest council rose to speak for war over sober and discreet in battle stern but kind to fallen foes, ever sober and discreet. In battle stern, but kind to fallen foes, he led the charge, but halted, slow to close the vexed retreat. In front of battle he, handsome and wild, his proud form would expose. But in the cheering van of victory, gentle and brave, he was the real chief to see. Lo, mid a thousand warriors where he stands, pride of all hearts and idol of his race, look how the chieftains of his war-tried bands kindle their courage in his valiant face. And as his lips in council open, trace how deep suspense her earnest furrows makes on every brow, how rings the forest place with sounding cheers when native valor wakes his dark intrepid eyes and he their standard takes. Proud spirit of the hummock bounded home, while well, was thy valor like a buckler worn, and when the light of other times shall come, when history's muse is, shall venture to adorn the brow of all her children hero born, when the bold truth to man alike assigns the place he merits, of no honor shorn, the wreath shall be that thy brave front entwines, as green as Mikasuki's everlasting pines, as green as Mikasuki's everlasting pines. Well bled thy warriors at their leader's side, well stood they the oppressor's wasting fire, for years sweep on, and in their noiseless tide bear down the memories of the past. The dire and gloomful works of tyrants shall expire till night survives, save truth's great victories. Then shall the voyager on his way aspire to ponder what vast wrecks of time he sees, and on fame's temple columns 
read their memories. Not so with Osceola, thy dark mate, the hidden terror of the hammock. He sat gloomily and nursed a bitter hate. The white man was his common enemy. He rubbed the burning wounds of injury and plotted in his dreadful silent gloom as dangerous as a rock beneath the sea. And when in fray he showed his fearless plume, revenge made sweet the blows that dealt the white man's doom. The pent-up wrath that rankled in his breast o'er smoldering embers shot a lurid glare, and wrongs that time itself had not redressed in ghost-like silence stalked and glimmered there. And from the wizard caverns of despair came voice and groan, reminding over and over the outrage on his wife so young and fair. And so by heaven and earth and hell he swore to treat in council with the white man never more. Such were the chiefs who led their daring braves in many a battle nobly lost or won and consecrated Mikasuki's graves to that sweet province of the summer sun. And still shall history forgetful run? Shall legend too be mute? Then poesy, divinest chronicler of deeds well done, from thy blessed shrine and annals of the free, sing forth their praise, and man shall hear attentively. The poorest black that came upon their shore to them was brother, their own flesh and blood. They fought his wretched manhood to restore. They sounded, they sound his hidings in the swampy wood and brought him forth. In arms before him stood the citizens of God and sovereign earth. They shot straight forward looks with flame imbued till in him manhood sprang a noble birth and warrior armed he rose to all that manhood's worth on the dark front of battle often seen or holding dangerous posts through dreadful hours in ranks obedient in command serene his comrades learned to note tested powers which prove that valor is not always ours be whomsoever we a common race soon from this union flows. Soon rarest flowers bloom out and smile in beauty's blending grace. And rivals they become for love's sublimest place. The native warrior leads his ebb and maid. The dark young brave his bloom-hued lover wins. And where soft spruce and willows mingle shade, Young life mid sunniest hours its course begins. All nature pours its never ending dins in groves of rare hued leaf without an end. Tis as if time, forgetting Eden's sins, relents and spirit visitors descend in love's remembered tokens, earth once more to blend. The sleepy mosses waved within the sun, and on the dark elms climbed the mistletoe. Great tangled vines through pendant branches run, and hang their purple clusters far below. The old pines wave their summits to and fro, and dancing to the earth impatient light touches the languid scene to quickly go like some gay spirit in its sunny plight that visiting the earth did glance and take its flight. Here lapped in Sylvia's all composing shade reposed a lake beneath the thick wood hill whose shady base by night and day was made the scene of Tristings, pining there until the shadows crept upon the midnight sill the lovesick youth spoke vows unto the moon, and pondering by the waters lone and still, the old man conned his lifetime's afternoon and turned the pleasing view. I shall be going soon. 
Come now, my love, the moon is on the lake, upon the waters is my light canoe. Come with me, love, and gladsome oars shall make a music on the parting wave for you. Come o'er the waters deep and dark and blue, come where the lilies in the marge have sprung. Come with me, love, for oh, my love is true.